Very glad you could join us. Good morning off the press for you here on PLOS TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'm not doing this alone. I have two gentlemen with me. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. And of course, we have Femi Ido Adegoke. A pleasure to have you join us as well. Both are public affairs analysts. All right, let's uh, start with the Punch newspaper and see what we have. Uh, NBA Sans Tikuse hate speech bill draconian. Okay, bill unjustifiable. Lawyers Association tells Senate APC government eroding gains of democracy. That's according to a senior advocate of Nigeria, San. We also have uh, on the front page a pictorial depiction of water court at the DSS office uh, under the caption, Showery, DSS fires bullet tear gas at protesters. Uh, you find details of that story on page 14 of the paper. Um, there's a highlight, pictorial highlight as well, just beside those photographs uh, you're looking at. You'll see a maximum punishment, debt by hanging. Um, that uh, some of the proposed commission on hate speech. We have commission on Niger Delta, we have the not. Now we're going to have a commission on hate speech. What will be the term of reference for such a commission? Let's just start this conversation. We'll get to the other headlines in a bit, but let's just get the, <laughs> your thoughts going. <laughs> a commission on hate speech. Yeah, the commission will have a board. There will be members, there will be a budget, there will be an office. So there will be food for some more people in the political class. Yeah. Um, that is what that is all about. Um, now, we, we can look at the meat of the, of the law. The proposed bill is a bill, not, not a law yet. Um, you, some of the elements make sense. Um, you say you don't want people to cause problem with their, whatever they say, uh, especially the one because the way the press has presented the uh, death penalty is as if you say for each speech you can get death penalty. No, it says if you do make a speech that causes the death of another person, you get the death penalty. You get the death penalty. Uh, it's Excuse still me. hate speech. Yes, it's still hate speech, but don't present it as if. Once you make a hate speech, you get the death penalty. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Now, um, on the face of it, that, that is not my own fear. On the face of it, it's not here nor there. But here is my biggest fear. My fear is that if you have a government that will not respect a bill, how can that kind of a government be trusted with a law like this? So if there's a litigation and the court said that gentleman has not made any hate speech, release him, it means I can decide to kill him. Since there's a portion in my law and I don't have to obey what the, what, what the court says, that, then I can decide to go ahead and jail him. That's frightening to consider. What so that's, that's my, you, you can't trust a government like this yeah. with a law like this, as simple as that. Yeah. It absolutely. What's your thought? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with him. On, the la on what he just said la and um, what he, at the beginning. Why do you want to create a commission for hate speech in this present condition, our economic condition? It, they just want to create food for the boys again, like he, like he rightly mentioned. And this government has shown over time that it cannot be trusted. We still have Dasuki still being held against court orders. We have uh, Ezazaki. And then the most recent is uh, Shore. So let's, let's talk about the Shore's case at uh, the DSS and the uh, firing of live uh, ammunition um, at the location, pepper spray. A yeah. journalist was injured um, saying yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What does this I mean? He tied it into the H yeah. Commission. Uh, what do you tie it to? Uh, I just, I will, like I've always said, we are a country that we're not organized, we have irresponsibility everywhere. People not taking responsibility. Even right now, our governance is eroding. And the democracy that we said we've had since uh, 1999 now till date, 20 years, I think we are eroding the values. It's going away gradually, and we don't even know what is going to happen. Okay, next. let's quickly run through some of the other headlines here. Are still this was on a the peaceful punch. protest, right? Yes, they were people sitting were down. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, from, from what I read, they were about 
wrapping things up when they trust so is, is this a government came. you want to trust with hate speech Peach commission a, a law like hate speech law like well, it, it is, is that, uh, another question that might come up is is that our priority at this point in time with so much security issues to deal with well as far as the dss role is concerned the the they have rules around that kind of a thing, but not to go and start harassing non-violent protesters all over the, the world. I think I think there's, there is a scare, and I can understand where the scare is coming from. A, a, a <laughs> lot of talking points on the Punch newspaper this morning. You have the ultimatum to the EFCC on Dizani. Uh, the Punch is uh, captioning it this way. Judge gives EFCC ultimatum to extradite Dizani from UK. I think the deadline is March. Um, of um, next year. I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but you'll get details of that on page 11 of the paper. And the Senate wants textile imports banned for five years. That's another one uh, of interest. Nigeria subsidizing patrol for neighboring countries. There's customs uh, CG. Um, I watched an interesting debate on um, the um, floor of the Senate a few, um, just yesterday, I think. Uh, and mm -hmm. one of the senators was talking a uh, reps member, rather, was talking about the situation at the borders where customs officials were also involved in illegal activities, even with the border closure. This is something he witnessed. So when you look at this, the communities in those areas complaining, uh, one wonders where we are headed. Subsidizing petrol. We've been doing that for ages, though. Uh, you still have a border fuel supply. Reps invite Aribe Shola, mm -hmm. Silver Customs, CG. Kaduma, Kaduna Man keeps sister in two-year solitary confinement. Oh, wow. Edo APC crisis deepens as faction suspends or shamale. And of course, we have the uh, Senate passing the 2020 budget, November 28. That's the Senate president insisting. Uh, before we move on to another paper, on the back of it, you have the truth about lying. Um, <laughs> That's a nice <laughs> caption. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a few Quick. comments on, yeah. on the subsidizing of petrol in the neighborhood. We're not doing the right thing about petroleum subsidy. It is easy to see why they are all, why we will always be subsidizing the neighbor because you are selling at one forty five and they are selling at three sixty or four hundred right across the border there. It is the reason why those filling stations close to the border in the first instance never have fill because it doesn't make sense for somebody if you own that filling station. Why would I sell it at one forty five when I can take it a few meters across to the border and sell it at four hundred naira? It doesn't make sense. Okay, uh, let's uh, come to uh, this day newspaper. Uh, APC in trouble as court disqualifies by us a governorship running mate. Lawyers outline options for party. That's uh, uh, one for you. And then praying for Nigeria, the first ladies kept uh, seen there smiling. Um, right beside it, you see anger as DSS agents open fire on protesters, journalists, arise TV cameraman, others brutalized. Um, Senate fixes November 28 for 2020 budget. That was recapped uh, from the Punch newspaper. And we also have domestic airlines deploy more aircraft to curb fear, fair hike, rather. Out, outrage grids Senate's death penalty for hate speech. And just behind the paper, we have Nigeria, 30 years after Berlin Wall. Um, that's the horizon, uh, Coyote speaking uh, this morning. Ado, uh, your thoughts, uh, which of these headlines caught your attention? Well, APC in trouble, in <laughs> court disqualified by also governorship, running mate. I have, um, I have issues with the court deciding our democracy. Because right now, there are still so many cases, the last election, there are still cases in court, there are still appeal court, and now even this one, before we even go to the poll, we're already having a court case. <laughs> we are not serious. We're not ready yet. Or we have lost it somewhere. But if there's a valid reason for it, I mean, the party is going to court, yeah. would you say they should ignore it and have no. an election and still go back to court for the same matter? No, I'm not talking about the court now. I'm talking about the political parties and organized. Should you present someone who is not qualified or who has any court case or any reason why he will be disqualified on the eve of an election? That's then a, uh, the political maybe something party. to do with uh, due diligence? The internal democracy a lot these are political parties don't even have internal democracy and they will now come out and say they want to uh, present themselves to the common people so our electoral act needs to come to needs to be revisited 
your thoughts on any other headline? And rather than talking about electoral acts, we prefer to start setting up commission for eight speech. And on the eve of 2023, then somebody will bring an electoral act and we'll throw it out again. But we need to set our priorities right in this country. Hate speech matters. I'm sure there are, it, it would be nice to get lawyers to wade into this, really. I'm sure there are existing laws of this, of this land that already addresses some of the issues we're seeking to address by a special hate law uh, uh, that, that, that we're, we're, we're pro pro propagating now. I, I don't think it's a priority. It should be a priority, rather. Uh, Biasa is still on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Uh, this time, uh, they're going with Biasa and Kogi 2019, a couple of riders just beside it on the front page. Uh, you have INEC last minute judgment won't alter our plan. Uh, that's uh, something for you there. We also have police tear gas IGP, INEC chair of this in Kogi. Court sacks Leon's running mate over irregularities. That's um, another one. Details on page 8 and 10 of the paper. Gale of suspensions rock a do APC. That's how the nation is reporting. I gave Obasanjo $140,000 from Atiku's son-in-law, says witness. <laughs> <laughs> Dust over debt penalty proposal for hate speech. That's uh, the biggest screamer on the front page of the nation. A bill passes first reading. PDP, a tickle caution against social media regulation bill. And then at the very top mass, just above the uh, plate head, you will see 5,000 Boko Haram men in the net. 20, 32 bomb factories uh, hit. We also have clash over Shore at DSS headquarters. Group falls attack. Court threatens to strike out the Zani's case, George angry over delay. On the back page, we have social media regulations, hate speech exterminators. That's um, <laughs> an interesting name uh, for hate speech people. Uh, the Nigerian Hamatan as a metaphor for protest. All right, uh, gentlemen, let's take a look at this uh, court, uh, this Zani. It's been dragging on since 2015, yeah. and uh, the lady hasn't stepped foot into this country, and I, and I don't uh, to my knowledge, not will. even once. I don't, no, no, not once. I don't think she will either. I'm also very doubtful about the extradition thing. For me, this is one of the reasons why we need to move the anti-corruption fight from post-event to a prevention perspective. Prevent people from abusing the, 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 our, our common wallet. Because if people have access to billions of nairas and pounds, as we talk about, it is very difficult to do it. It is extremely difficult. You probably can never even, how, you will tell the UK to ask this woman to come to Nigeria, what will be the basis? Will the basis stand up in court in the UK or will it stand the scrutiny of, of the uh, uh, security operative in the UK? I don't think so. So does that mean all of this, this, the, the, this whole thing might just, because the court has threatened to it might just dismiss the matter? Out. Most, most of the, the most significant corruption uh, uh, thing that we want were done outside of this country. But doesn't it worry you? Because this is one of the biggest anti-corruption cases in this country. Unfortunately, it worries me only to the extent that up till now, our emphasis has still been significantly on catching them after they have stolen. Your thoughts? I, yes, I have to agree with him. We, we've said it times and number. We need to become a process nation where we have systems in place and a preventive measure rather than a reactive measure, like he said. Now, the, the uh, court is now telling EFCC that if they're giving you time limits, or else they will throw the case out. And we all, we've read different versions of what this woman has done with our office. And then we're still here. I'll take it to the Boko Haram now. It's, we are hearing the 5,000 Boko Haram members are in the net. Where do we get those information? You don't just come out and give blanket statements. We should have records where oh, you, people can go to and oh, this picture names to them. Then we have, we know that you are, you are, you are up to it. And I can identify, oh, this is a Boko Haram member. Like we were saying the other day about um, a, a, a list or a file for 
uh, university lecturers. Sex, sex offenders. Sex offenders. We need to be, begin to create things like that. Oh, what are your thoughts about the tear gassing of the INEC chair and uh, Inspector General of Police in Kogi State? Oh, Saturday is not looking very... Well, <laughs> no, let, let me get it. <laughs> for the Inspector General of Police and uh, the chairman of uh, uh, the party, I... I'm really, really not surprised because you create a monster. If you create a monster, you, are, you must be ready to live with it. The situation in Edo State, I want your thoughts on it. FEC suspends the chairman of the National Party chairman. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's going to stand. Um, but it, it, it's an internal crisis that I believe may take down that party in Edo State if it is not carefully uh, uh, dealt with. You have a governor that seems to cut across an appeal. Uh, and then the party is saying, we don't want that same governor, that, that, the, the godfatherism kind of situation. Why not let this be an open ground and let the people decide? So if the APC in Edo State are the one that says, okay, this guy will not win, we won't return him in the primary, that's fair, fair enough. Mm. But it shouldn't be the national level, uh, the national uh, 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 executive of the party that will say, oh, that guy should be removed from that place. I don't get it. The internal democracy is where it all starts from. All right. Well, let's go to the Vanguard newspaper and see what we can do uh, with the time we have left. We have a screamer here still on the DSS issue. Protesters storm DSS headquarters want Shawari Bakari freed. Uh, a couple of writers to that story. A journalist injured as DSS dispatched protesters demanding Shore is released. And that's a picture on the front page. The man in question is an insert there. Uh, various caption on all the placards. Yeah, if you want to take a look at it, it's on your screen or you can get a copy for yourself. Um, and just beside it, you'll see reps ask customs to lift ban on fuel supply to stations at land borders. Uh, we also have, we're using recovered loose to fund national budget, says federal government. Uh, is, is there some sort of, um, um, uh, is there a necessity for transparency in the use of this? Because so much money we remember the, um, I think some um, gates, loot. no, Mena gates yeah, or the okay. tower where we got so much money, so much money, mind-boggling uh, amount. Even the Ikoi. Exactly. I think that was where I was going. Five so million dollars. The government is saying they are going to use it to fund the national budget, but can we get accountability? Uh, we can ask. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's one of those things that you... Uh, media should help us ask. But the way I think this plays out is you recover the money and you put it in the consolidated federal, uh, government, uh, federal government account, federal revenue account. And once it's in that pool, it is shared the out. Use, uh, There's already a, a, a design formula for sharing it out. So when you're sharing money to the state and the local government and the federal government, you share it also. It forms part of the pool of fund of federal government of Nigeria and it's shared out. You know. Um, custom uh, to buy on Yes, um, to where is it? ban on full supply to decision on the borders. Reps ask, there is no coordinated approach to what we are doing at the borders. That's the main problem. The closure in the first instance was a knee-jerk reaction that wasn't properly thought through. Mm -hmm. And then you now, you now started developing legs and arms all over the old place, which are also another layer of knee-jerk reactions. We don't have a coordinated approach to this. And we will continue to see things like this. Custom will go this way. Uh, the National Assembly will go another way. The people will go in the third direction. Hmm. There are people who are benefiting. There are benefits to, yeah. to some of it. It's, it's just a cacophony of confusion all over the old place. Um, Femi, I want to take your thoughts on a nationwide blackout looms as electricity union threatened strike issues 21 day ultimatum. Your thoughts? <laughs> Do we, the first thing, do we even have the electricity? <laughs> That's the starting point. <laughs> we don't even have the electricity. <laughs> and now, when they go on strike, the country comes to, to the ground. Because that's what it is. Right now, we're not getting sufficient electricity, we're not getting enough. And now, their reason for going on strike now brings me back to what I said about labor. It's only when it's to increase minimum wage 
that the label comes out. Okay, uh, we, we actually have something on minimum wage. Minimum wage, FG to release secular for pensioners, workers. Uh, but let's look at this one just above the masthead of the punch, uh, Vanguard rather, Vanguard newspaper. You will see uh, how we can revive our textile industry. A quick thought on that. According to the Senate, they up. want us to also close the borders on textile. Mm -hmm. And that, in their opinion, is a way to bring back the textile industry. It's, it's a fallacy. One of the problems, <laughs> I think we are mentally lazy to do proper analysis of situations, to understand. Do you, do you remember there was a time we pumped money into this textile industry? Yeah. Where is the, where is the money? I think it was the the intervention of, fund for the textile. It was a bus of your stack, yeah. Some of these things are not just the way they appear. And we need to do a lot more due diligence to find out the dynamics of this industry and why we are where we are so that we can do the appropriate thing, not just go and close border. Anything that doesn't work, go and close border. Huh? That's that's like a blanket. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, I need to touch on this. 500 teachers protest block uh, Cross River Governor's office. Uh, does that um, strike you as uh, not needed at this time? Uh, I guess it's needed. I'm, I'm, an <laughs> I'm an apostle of the people speaking out and taking their own destiny in their own hand. If the governor is perceived not to care about the, uh, the education of the state, hold him to ransom. Let him feel the, the heat. heat. All right, we'll wrap things up now with complete sports. To look at some of the trending headlines here. Um, Madrid set to splash 200 million euro on Mbappe. Uh, we have planned to sell six first team players to fund move. Uh, we also have Chukweze targets winning start versus, okay? Chukweze targets winning start versus Bene. Mm -hmm says uh, we saw the exploit at Afcon. Uh, we have also uh, 23 eagles in camp. And then uh, Rao expects a tough clash with Bene. Uh, but some of the headlines here. Omera, uh, relation semi-ajai rivalry. Um, we have um, uh, gives Rao selection headache. Uh, your thoughts on any of these? Uh, that's it on your screen. Uh, most other headlines are there. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just like the fact <laughs> that you're selling six players to buy one. one. <laughs> okay, that's Madrid. Madrid is selling well, six players <laughs> yeah. so that you can fund. The <laughs> so is that one a magic, the no, magic wand? No, Mbappe is seen to be the next thing to happen, the next big thing in the football okay. world. So the guy is quick, them. is good, is skillful. And he's a young, he's a young lad. So, and you know, uh, Real Madrid, they they're known for acquiring the superstars. They're called the Galacticos. So they they got a, a lamp, uh, they got a Hazard from Chelsea. So they are looking at bringing as many as possible and get rid of their hood legs. <laughs> and then uh, Chukwe is a winning Nigeria. We have no excuse, not winning Benin today. We're playing today at 5 p.m. Benin is just 40 million people. We're 200 million people. Those population really <laughs> counts. Anyway, let's let's hope for the best for the games tonight. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Thanks Always a pleasure to have us. you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we hope some of these headlines were explanatory enough. Otherwise, please go read in depth so you know comprehensively um, what to think about these issues. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.